Hello and welcome to our course on Microsoft Project 2016. My name is Toby and I'm your instructor on this course. So we're almost ready to start creating some projects but I'm afraid there's still a couple of things to cover before we really get started and in this section I'm going to give you an overview of the course and point out a couple of important things that you need to bear in mind when we're working through the course a couple of things that you may need to do before we start now during the course I'm obviously going to demonstrate a number of tools and techniques and primarily I'm going to use a particular project for this I'm going to arrange a wedding and then we're going to go through the steps the task leading up to the wedding and see the sort of thing that happens the sort of problems that arise and we'll be looking at aspects of the wedding like costs and resources the people and other resources that are needed in the wedding I'll be setting you a number of exercises to do during the course and your exercises are going to be based on your project which is to refit a bathroom I'll be telling you about both of those projects in some of the early sections of the course now so that you can work through all of the examples that I use on the course there is a course files folder and the contents of the folder should be very similar to the list that you can see in front of you here and as you go through each section of the course you should be able to match it up to one of those files you can open it up on your installation of Microsoft Project 2016 and work through it with me and for the exercises in the course there's another folder with my sample answers to those exercises as well as well as some of the information that you'll need in order to be able to try the exercises yourself and for both of those sets of files make sure you know where they are and I suggest that you keep a sort of backup copy as well in case anything goes wrong and you need to be able to start from scratch again with any of the files in this section I'm going to start work on the project plan for a wedding now of course different people would have very different opinions on what might be part of the arrangements for a wedding so what I'm going to try to do is to come up with a project plan for a wedding that has enough detail in it to be reasonably realistic but which will also reflect the different styles of wedding that you may get in different parts of the world in different cultures and so on having said that the style of wedding that I'm planning here is not one that's associated with any particular religion for example now what you're going to be doing from very soon onwards is planning the refit of a bathroom in a domestic house so what I'm going to try to show you while I'm doing this wedding plan is some of the ideas that I want you to incorporate into building up the plan for the bathroom refit you may well find when you're looking at either of these projects that they don't really reflect how you would set about doing them but really that's not the point you're learning the tools in Microsoft Project to do these things and you're not actually learning how to either plan a wedding or refit a bathroom another important point to make here is that we're building these things up in layers I'm not going to go deep into the details straight away we will certainly get to the detail but we will do it one layer at a time and I'll explain the tools and techniques associated with project 2016 as we go so first of all I've made a list of the main aspects of this wedding plan let's take a look at that first now I'm sure this isn't going to be quite right but I've made this list it's actually in the course file folder if you want a copy of this list and it's planning attire and by attire I mean basically the clothes that people are going to wear but it's probably a little bit broader than that guests venue catering flowers memories details the wedding day itself and the honeymoon so they're going to be my main headings and the first thing I'm going to do is to start adding each of those to my project plan so let's take the first one planning and set that one up first so I've created a new blank project and in the task name I enter planning now a couple of things to point out here I'm using Gantt chart view and I did show you briefly earlier on in the course a couple of ways of switching to Gantt chart view if you've not got Gantt chart view on already one way is to use one of the buttons down towards the right hand end of the status bar but you can also go to the view tab and select Gantt chart view there 
Another thing to bear in mind is that you should have new tasks set at auto scheduled or what I'm going to do next won't work for you. So having entered planning as the task name I press the tab key and a number of fields are filled in for my first task. One of them is the duration and by default a task has a duration of one day with a question mark normally. Now what the question mark means is that this is an estimated duration and what one normally does is to leave the duration as an estimate until you have actually got a reasonably reliable duration for that task. Now at this stage I'm not going to worry about durations at all I'm just going to get all of those tasks in but bear in mind those question marks are a good way of reminding myself that that's just an estimate of the duration and believe me planning a wedding is a lot longer than a one day task. Ignore work for the moment and let's look at start and you can just about see that the start date is Thursday December the 17th. Now one thing that may already be annoying you is being able to see the contents of all of these fields so let's deal with that first. If you need to make these columns wider or narrower, if you hover over the header, the grey part here, and go to the vertical line between two fields, you'll see the cursor change to a double arrow. If you click with the mouse at that point and drag one way or the other, you can make the columns wider and narrower. Now in that way you can make sure that you can see the contents of any particular column at any particular time. We'll do a little bit more work on how to format Gantt charts, how to lay them out more neatly later on, but for the moment that's probably one of the most important things you need to be able to do. So just practice making those columns narrower and wider so that you can see things a little bit more conveniently. And also there is a bar, a vertical dividing line between the table on the left and the chart on the right. If you hover over that anyway you get a slightly different double arrow and you can change that divider so that you can see more or less of the table more or less of the chart and again you need to get used to adjusting those to suit your specific requirements. Now let's go back to this start date Thursday December 17th. Now by default new tasks are created either on project start date or on the current date. Now in this case both of those are today. You can check which it's set to by looking at project options on the schedule page. I suggest you have a quick look at that now. It's immediately under where you've said new tasks are auto scheduled and you'll see in this case that it says project start date. So what is the project start date? By default project start date is the date I create the project. And I created this project today, so it's today, Thursday the 7th, 17th. If you click on the Project tab on the ribbon, in the Properties group, normally the first button there is Project Information. Click on Project Information, and one of the basic pieces of Project Information is the start date. And that is the start date, Thursday, December 17th, 2015. It will also tell you in this case what the finish date is. Now of course I haven't really got much work scheduled on this project at the moment so it means that I can start planning this wedding today and I can actually have the wedding today as well because I'll be ready. Believe me that situation will not last much longer. And going back to what I was just saying now about project options you can see here that we're scheduling from project start date. Some projects might be scheduled from the project finish date. Now it's very conventional to start a project and say when will I be ready but it also pretty often happens that you know when you've got to be finished by and what you really need to know is when should you start. You can do both of those types of scheduling in project 2016 but it's very important to know at any time whether you're scheduling from the start date or to the finish date. The approach we're taking now with planning this wedding is that we are starting at a start date and when we've done all the planning and got all the other activities in 
will know when we can be ready by. So we haven't got a date for the wedding yet. We need to do a lot of work to do a lot of planning first, but we will find out when we would be ready to have the wedding by. So let me cancel this dialogue for now. and I'm going to put in a couple more of the tasks in my project. OK, I've got three tasks in there now. You may be slightly surprised by how my plan looks, but there are very good reasons for it. At the moment, I have not told Project 2016 much about these tasks at all. I haven't, for instance, said that attire must happen after planning or that guests must happen after attire. So it has no reason to put these tasks in sequence. A very important point here as well is that you don't actually have to enter the tasks of a project in chronological sequence. I could put all of these in any order that I wanted to. But the convention is that the tasks you expect to at least start first go first in the list. Now in the left hand column here you have something called a task ID. And as you'll see later on in the course, task IDs fulfill a very important purpose. But one way of looking at this is that generally speaking the convention is that the tasks with the lower IDs correspond to the tasks that are performed earliest in the project. Having said that, and as you'll see later on with this wedding plan, the individual elements that make up each of these tasks, and bear in mind we're going to break each of these tasks down as we go through, will overlap some of the things that we thought were going to be early on, will be later on, and so on. And in any case, as the project progresses, things will tend to change. So having the earliest tasks as the ones with the lowest ID numbers is more of a sort of general guideline than any sort of specific rule. The next thing I'm going to do is to put in the rest of those tasks. And there we are. I have all of those headings in. All of them have an estimated duration of one day, which is clearly not the case. But we have a starting point for our plan. And having done that work, the next most important thing to do is to save this plan. And that's what we're going to do first in the next section. So I'll see you then. Welcome back to our course on Project 2016. In this section, I'm going to look at opening and closing projects. And before I do that, the very first thing I need to do is to save the first version of the wedding plan. And I'm going to talk more about saving in a couple of sections time. For the moment, I'm going to save this to the course file folder with a very straightforward file name. And then we're going to concentrate on a bit of opening and closing for now. And I'll tell you more about save later. So in order to save this project, go to Backstage View, click on Save As. Save As brings up a Save As page. And exactly what you see here will depend on what Save As locations are available to you. I have SharePoint sites available to me. I have a couple of OneDrive locations available to me and I have of course the PC that I'm working on. Now depending on how your defaults are set you will by default be offered one of the available options. On this occasion I'm not going to accept my default of saving to a SharePoint task list. I'm going to save it to my PC and that's what I want you to do as well whenever you save files. Now when I click on this PC, I'll normally see a list of folders that are either default folders or ones that I've used recently. Now I don't actually want to use any of those folders, so I'm actually going to the bottom here and I'm going to browse to the folder that I want. Once I've used that folder, and that's the course file folder in my case, that will appear on this Save As list under this PC next time. So I'm going to click on Browse and then Browse to the Course File folder. Now at the moment the Course File folder is empty as far as the Save As type that I'm using is concerned. And my default Save As type is set to MPP. That should be your default Save As type as well. So all I need to do now is to give my project file a name. So the extension will be MPP 
and the name I'm going to give it is SSI Wedding 01. Click on Save. Now when I've saved that file, the file name appears in the header of Microsoft Project 2016 at the top there to remind me of what the name is. And if I were now to save this or any other project using the approach that I've just taken, so if I do again File, Save As, and click on This PC, that Course Files folder now appears in the list of Save As locations. Now there's a couple of important things to note about these sort of lists of locations and lists of files and so on. And that is that as you work more and more with Project 2016, obviously these lists are going to tend to get longer and things will start to drop off the bottom of the list. Now there's a little pin on the right here and if you click that you can pin items to the list. I anticipate that I'm going to be saving a lot of items to the course files folder. I don't want it to drop off the bottom of any lists so I'm going to pin it to this list to make sure that it stays there. There's now a new category here of pinned so if you're going to be working with a couple of folders, the course file folder and the exercise file folder, you may well want to pin them to this and any other list that you finish up using. So having saved that project to that folder, I'm now going to close it by clicking on the close button here. And I now have Project 2016 open with no files open. In a moment I'm going to look at some of the options for opening that wedding project again. But just before I do, let's go to Project Options, the Advanced page. And I did mention earlier on that we would be looking at some of these Advanced Options as we go through the course. There won't be time to go through every single thing, but I will point out a few of them as we go. And I do suggest that from time to time you take a browse through these options. For example, on the Advanced page in the Display section, the first option, show this number of recent projects. In that way you can control how many projects appear in the recent list. And below that, one of the options is show this number of unpinned recent folders. So you have a number of options that you can experiment with and set to your own requirements there. I'm not going to change my setting at the moment. But what I am going to do is to exit project altogether and sort of pretend it's the next day and come back in and see what happens as I start up project. Well, when I start up project I can of course see the wedding project in my recent projects list. But I'm not going to open that at the moment. What I'm going to do is to start a new blank project. And whilst I'm working on my new blank project I decide that I need to look at the wedding project. Now I don't need to close this project. I can have more than one project open at once. So I'm going to go to File Open. And of course there in my recent files list is the wedding project. I might choose to pin it to that list. Remember what I pinned before was the folder not the individual project. Now I'm not going to pin this on this occasion, but I am going to select the wedding project, open it now. Obviously if I needed to use Browse or this PC or go to any other location, that's fine. And that gives me many options for opening existing projects. So I click on Wedding 01 and I've now got two projects open. There's absolutely no problem with having two or more projects open other than switching between them and that's what we're going to look at next. There are a number of ways of switching between open projects. There are ways within project and there are ways within Windows as well. Now the ways within Windows of switching between open projects to some extent depend on whether you're using Windows 7 or 8 or 8.1 or 10. One way is to use the well-known Alt-Tab way of cycling through the running programs. Another way, and this I'm going to demonstrate in Windows 10, is if I move the mouse over the project icon on the taskbar, I can see the two open projects. And all I need to do is to click on the one I want to work on, and I'll switch into that project. And then obviously to switch back, just choose the other one. 
Within project itself, the way of doing this is if you go to the View tab, in the Window group towards the right hand end, one of the options is Switch Windows. And if you click there, you'll see a list of the open projects. And all you need to do is to select the one that you want to work on, and then you'll be taken into that one. So there's a couple of options there for switching between open projects. So by now, you should have enough tools and techniques to create a project, save it, close it, open it again, work on more than one project at a time, and it's time for you to do the first course exercise. That's what I'm going to set you in the next section, so please join me for that. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2016. In this section I'm setting you Exercise 1 on the course. The information you need for Exercise 1 is in the Exercise folder. It's a text file, Exercise 1 Major Tasks.txt, and that lists the major tasks, the major headings for the bathroom refit that you're going to plan. So I'd like you to use that list and produce a Microsoft Project 2016 project like this. Now note the name that I've given my sample answer, Simon Says IT, etc. Project 2016, Exercise 1. All of the sample answers that I provide will be in that same exercise folder. So make sure you finish up with something pretty close to mine. I appreciate that the start date for you will be a different start date than mine. That won't matter as you'll see as we go along. That's it for this section. Please join me in the next one. To get the Project 2016 course exercise and instructor demo file, click the link below in the video details. You can also scroll through the video details to find each section for this course, in addition to the playlist for the complete course for Microsoft Project 2016. Finally, if you're enjoying this training, please leave us a thumbs up and some comments. Now, let's continue with our Microsoft Project training. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2016. In this section we're going to look at some other basic properties of tasks. And I'm going to return to that first version of the wedding plan. And the first thing I want to look at is the duration of a task. Now if I look at that first task, the one with the name planning, and click in the duration field, the duration, as I explained earlier, has a default value of one day with a question mark indicating that it is an estimated duration. I can use these little rollers to increase the duration. Note that as soon as I do that, what project assumes I mean is that the estimation part of it has gone and I'm now saying, for example, that that is a two-day task. And of course, I can increase that duration pretty much as much as I want to. Or if I decide I've overdone it, I can decrease it again. Now, I don't have to use those rollers. If I, for instance, went to the attire field, I can literally click in that field and type a date, either looking at the field itself as I do it, or of course looking at the entry bar. So I could, for example, say three days and tick that. And as you can see, as I adapt and adjust the duration of the task, the bar in the Gantt chart on the right extends accordingly. Now, we haven't actually looked at the definition of working days and working weeks and working hours yet, but you can probably see from that that when I'm talking about, for example, an eight-day task, I'm talking about eight working days, and that doesn't include days at the weekend with the current calendar that I'm using on this project. Now, look very carefully at the bar chart on the right, because for the tasks that still have a one-day estimated duration, you'll see that at the right hand end of each of those you've got that vertical line. Now it's pretty much a coincidence that it's at the right hand end of those bars. That vertical line indicates the current date, that's the today line. So at any point you can see where today is in relation to the project or if you like where the project is in relation to today. 
and we talked already about project start date. Supposing I was entering this project and in fact the various aspects of it had started a couple of weeks ago. I'm a bit late setting the project up in project 2016 so some of these things have happened already. What I could do is to change the project start date. So look for example at that first planning task Thursday December 17th the start date that's the date that I entered it yesterday and that is currently the start date for this project. Let's go into the project information and change the start date to a date two weeks ago December the 4th. Click on OK. None of their durations have changed but each of the tasks has a new start date. Now of course I could change individuals task start dates so for instance if I wanted to change the date that the attire task is starting if I click in the start field and click on the drop down I get a date picker and if I decided well we're going to need to look at attire we're going to need to start to sort clothes out but we're not really going to be able to do that until after the Christmas holiday so let me go right on the month there let's go into January and let's say that we're going to start that on say Tuesday the 5th of January so that's when that task is going to start now in doing that one of the problems I have is that that task has now shot off to the right in my chart and I can no longer see it that may or may not be a problem but you know how to resolve that already because you know about the zoom slider so let's zoom out of it that's better now I can see that attire task in January 2016 and of course if I wanted to I could not only set the duration of each of these tasks but I could start to actually set them out in time so for instance I could decide on a wedding day and assuming that I'm confident we'd be ready for that I could plot that at some time next year as well and similarly for each of those other tasks I could set up duration I could decide on a start date and I could start to put my project plan together with a lot more care and attention and hopefully with a lot more resemblance to what actually is going to happen and that is indeed what we are going to be doing over the next quite a few sections however this project if it just comprised those roughly 10 tasks would not be a very realistic project and so we need to put in a lot more detail to make this into a realistic planning exercise now in order to do that you need to know quite a lot more about tasks you need to know about dependencies and you need to know about resources and one of the next things I'm going to tell you about in fact I'm going to start on that in the next section is you need to understand summary tasks and outlining but for the balance of this section I want to look just at information about tasks we've seen task name duration start date finish date I mentioned work once or twice but in fact for any task in project 2016 there is an awful lot of information about that task available and that you may need to be able to manipulate in some way now I've got the attire task selected what I'm going to do is to right click on that row bring up the contextual menu and one of the options about four from the bottom there is information I'm going to click on information and it brings up the task information dialogue now this is a dialogue with half a dozen tabs and each tab has information about the selected task much of the information won't mean very much at the moment by the end of the course most of it will and some things I think the descriptions you can see here pretty much explain what that particular piece of task information is about so for instance you know about name but percent complete how much of that task have we done we haven't done any of it It's zero percent complete it's an auto scheduled task I briefly explained what that means you can see the start date and the finish date there it's not an estimated duration so that checkbox isn't ticked three day task and it has a priority of 500 now the other properties on this particular tab are ones we're going to be looking at later on 
But let's look at the other tabs. What are its predecessors? Which tasks must happen before this one or in some way that it depends on? Which resources does it use? There's also an advanced tab with information like deadlines, constraints, specific calendars to use and so on. Virtually all of these we're going to be looking at during the course. We can record notes about the task and we can even set up custom fields with custom information about the task. So that's the task information for the attire task. Let me cancel that and just point out something I've mentioned a couple of times before. Task information is a good example of something which you can get at in a variety of different ways. So with that same attire task selected, if I go to the task tab on the ribbon, there is a button in the properties group, information, that brings up exactly the same dialogue. And in fact, if I double click on the task, that brings up that dialogue as well. So there are many ways of bringing up task information, but access to that dialogue and the contents of it are going to be very important to you. And if you want to do a little bit of extra reading, note the help button there. That's it for this section. I'll see you in the next one. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2016. In this section we're going to look at summary tasks and outlining and I'm going to use the wedding project and demonstrate how we can build up the level of detail and the structure of this project. Now I mentioned a couple of times already that the tasks that I currently have in the project planning, attire, guests, etc. are actually high-level tasks. They really represent groups of tasks and what we're going to start to do now is to break each of those high-level tasks what we're going to call summary tasks down into individual tasks or subtasks. By the end of this section we'll have a much more detailed project but to get us started I want to look at one particular summary task. Before I really get started, I'd like to point out two things. First of all, if you were doing a breakdown of the tasks involved in a wedding project, particularly if you're doing it from scratch, you would almost certainly come up with a different breakdown to me. And in fact, just about everybody who tries to do this comes out with a different breakdown. So there isn't a sort of right answer here. It's important that all of the necessary tasks in the project are represented ultimately in the project plan. But the way you do this breakdown will be a very subjective way indeed. The second thing to point out is although I'm going to add quite a bit of detail to this wedding project plan, I could add a lot more. We're going to finish up with something of the order of somewhere between say 50 and 100 tasks in total. But if you really were doing this very very thoroughly there would probably be hundreds and hundreds of tasks. So the task I'm going to break down is the guests task. Now if I select the task underneath it, venue, and right click on venue and click on insert task, I get a new task above venue and that is actually going to be one of my guests subtasks. It gets a default name, note new task there between chevron markers and then default values for duration etc. Now what I'm going to put as the name of that task, I'll just click in the entry bar and type the name in, is Make Guest List. So that is my first guest related task. Now the important thing here is that this is actually a subtask of my guests task. And in order to indicate that it's a subtask, I'm going to demote it in my task hierarchy. There is a button in the schedule group on the task tab. We hover over it and it says indent task. And indenting that task automatically demotes it within the hierarchy. Watch what happens when I do that. Now not only does make guest list get indented and that clearly indicates that it is a subtask of guests but a number of other things happen as well. One of them is that guests becomes bold indicating that it is a summary task and it also gets a tiny little wedge next to it and we can use that wedge 
to expand and collapse the guests summary task. If I click on the wedge now I only see the summary task guests. In order to see the subtasks, in this case there is only one subtask and that is make guest list, I use the wedge so I expand and collapse with that wedge. Now what I'm going to do is to put in the second subtask. Again I'm going to click on venue, I'm going to right click and once again insert task. This new task clearly goes above venue again but it also inherits the indentation level what we call the outline level of the task above it so it automatically becomes a subtask of guests because it gets the same indentation level as make guests list so let me type in now the name of that second task now you can see there how the text is wrapped. I need my task name column to be a little bit wider, so let me widen that out a little. If when I entered this, send out invitations was not actually meant to be a subtask of guests, all I need to do is make sure I've got that task selected, and then one of the other buttons in the schedule group on the task tab is outdent task and that would as we say promote send out invitations to itself be a summary task clearly a summary task with no subtasks at the moment but I do want it to be a subtask of guests so let me just indent it again and let me put in the third and fourth subtasks so having entered the fourth subtask let me just point out something else here let me right click on book guest accommodation Note that the indent and outdent buttons are actually on the mini toolbar here, so you could use that. And as usual, as you're working in Project 2016, the project itself offers you the most likely commands on either the contextual menu or the mini toolbar. So keep an eye open for those because they often give you a very quick way of working on a task like this. Now at this point you may feel inclined to work out how long each of these tasks is going to take and when each of them needs to happen and so on. I don't want you to worry about any of those things at the moment. We're going to come back to durations and timescales and dependencies and so on as we go through the next sections on the course. All I want to do at the moment is to put in the structure of the project and then we'll start to add the detail a little bit later on. Having said that, there's one more thing I need to show you here about summary tasks. Let me go to make a guest list and I'm going to increase the duration to eight days. Now, if you look over at the Gantt chart itself, you'll see that the make guest list task is indeed now eight days long. But you'll also see that the summary task no longer has the same type of bar representing it as a standard subtask. The summary task has a different format bar on the right there. Now we're going to talk about Gantt chart formatting much later on and you can in fact change most aspects of the formatting of these bars anyway. But there's two important things. One of them is that the summary task does have a different format of bar which helps it stand out on the right there. But also the summary task by default does not have a duration of its own. The duration of the summary task is actually the duration from when its first subtask starts right through to when its latest subtask ends. So the duration of the summary task is in effect dictated by the scheduling of its subtasks. What I'm going to do now is to insert the rest of the subtasks for this particular project. Now if you'd like to actually do this yourself uh, rather than use the sample file, the demo file that I'll tell you about towards the end of this section, there is a text file in the course file folder and that lists each of the subtasks under its relevant summary task. So if you want a bit of practice, you could go through and set these up. This is what you'll see in that text file. It's called SSI Project 2016 Wedding Task Breakdown.txt. 
So here is the revised wedding plan. This will be the version that I'll save as wedding two. If you want to just take a look at it and perhaps compare it with a version that you've made yourself. And there's one other area now we need to look at. And in order to look at that area, what I'm going to do is to add even more detail to this temporarily. I'm going to take the task select and order wedding dress and I'm going to break that down into three further subtasks. So the first subtask is going to be select wedding dress, indent that, and then two further subtasks. Now as you can see these three further subtasks are select wedding dress, order dress and measurements and fittings. And we might, for example, break down measurements and fittings into measurements and then first fitting and second fitting or something like that. So as you can see, even at this early stage of planning the wedding, we're starting to get quite a deep structure to the plan. Now when you're looking at a plan like this, and bearing in mind that we've still only got round about, well, just under 50 tasks in total, the highest ID number there is 43. If we really went in and put in all of the detail, actually making your way around this plan would start to get quite complicated because it will look more and more complicated. We haven't even started yet on durations and assigning resources and putting in dependencies and time constraints and so on. So there'll be much more detail to add and it's usually the case when you start to increase the size of a project that you only want to look at certain parts at certain times or even that you only want to look at the project at a certain level. Now there is a straightforward way of determining the level of detail that you see in a plan such as this one. What I'm going to do is to scroll back up to the top of the plan. I'm going to select the attire summary task. That's the task with ID 4. And then on the view tab, I'm going to go to the data group and there is an outline button. If you look at the description there, the screen tip description, specify which outline level should be used in the view. For a large project you may want to collapse everything to outline level 1 or 2 and then expand only the sections that interest you. If I have a tire selected and click on the bottom of this outline button, let's see what happens if I say hide subtasks. You now only see a tire and all subtasks at all levels below it are hidden. Let's go back to the outline button again. Now if I want to show the subtasks again, I can just click on show subtasks. Now in fact, I can apply the same principle to the whole project. So if I click on the bottom of the outline button and say click on level 1, show outline level 1, Look what happens. I see everything just at level 1. If I click on it and say level 2, I see everything at level 2. But note with task ID 5, select an order wedding dress under attire, level 2 means that I don't see its subtasks. I only see the level 2 task select and order wedding dress. So, as you can see, the summary tasks like planning and attire and guests are at what we call level 1, and the level below that is level 2, and so on. There is in Project 2016 a level 0, and level 0 is actually pretty important. So let me show you what level 0 is. If you go to the Gantt Chart Tools Format tab, towards the right-hand end in the Show Hide group, there is a checkbox for Project Summary Task, and the Project Summary Task has some very important uses, some of which we're going to look at during this course. So I'm going to check that, which switches on the Project Summary Task. You can see there that the name of the task is basically the name of the file at the moment, so it's SSI Wedding 02. And there is a duration for the project summary task, which is in effect the duration of the project. And as we'll see, there are many aspects of the project that we need to use the project summary task in order to deal with. But more on those things later. I can select the project summary task. And if I went back to the view tab and the outline button and said hide subtasks, 
bearing in mind that this applies to the selected task, I would hide all subtasks and I would only see the project summary task itself. Let me show those again. And then finally, since I've put in the subtasks of task 5 here, select and order wedding dress, I think I'll leave those in for now. They may be useful to us a little bit later on. So that's it on summary tasks and outlining. Please join me for exercise 2 in the next section. Hello again and welcome back to our course on Project 2016. In this section I'd like you to take the information in the file in the exercise folder Project 2016 Exercise 2 Task Breakdown .txt, and use that to create the fuller version of the bathroom refit project with structure. So for example, in the planning summary task, there are six subtasks, scoping, select style, etc. And what you should produce will be hopefully similar to my sample answer to exercise two. Now notice I've still only got one day estimated as the duration of each task. But my project now has structure, and in particular note the project summary task right at the top there, the task with ID 0. So that's it for exercise 2. My sample answer is in the usual place. I'll see you in the next section. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To get the Project 2016 course exercise and instructor demo file, Click over here and click over there to watch the complete seven hour beginner course for Microsoft Project 2016.